Okay, welcome to Drafting Dragons episode 5. Quite lucky today, you've got two of us in the room, so there's myself and there's uh, Tom joining me as well. Hello. Uh, so, pretty uh, pretty evil first pack to be fair. Um, the Harbinger of the Hunt just wins games. Um, but then there's also Flattened, Pacifism and Epic Confrontation in the pack. It's uh, quite, a, quite a tough call. Tom, what are you going for here? I've got the tree show. He is pretty awesome. Yeah. Does mighty, mighty powerful things. Let's see if we can see it a little bit bigger. There we go. But if we can get to activate the abilities on it, it can just do some nasty stuff. Um, but the amount of the hard removal in this pack is quite scary. I'm not a massive fan of playing red green either, so we're not sort of locking into that so early. Fair enough. With my place, I would probably. I would normally take maybe the pacifism. I like the red white decks in this format. And then we hit Gleam of Authority, which would have been amazing. Um, we've gone from an amazing pack to an absolutely mediocre pack. I mean, the best card by far in this pack is the Gleam of Authority, because if you can get this going, it's just nuts. Um, Circle of Elders is okay. It fits in well with the Harbinger, Harbinger of the Hunt. Everything else is pretty, pretty meh, to be fair. And I'm going to take the gleam. I'm just going to take, keep taking the best card in the pack, and then we'll sort it out later. Yeah. We have seen two evolving wild so far, so we might get one back and be able to play three color. Okay, so into this pack, um, Warbringer come around is quite nice, um, it doesn't look like we're starting out in the dash deck, but if we can get into this pretty early on, we can get a really powerful deck together. Enduring Victory is quite good as well, um, it's just great for the fact that it kills something. Everything else in the pack again, Segmented Crotic is okay, Sorry, of Quartermasters is a fine card, um, especially if we're going to have a sort of Gleam of Authority in play as well. I'm really not sure uh, which way we want to be going here. Should probably try to make a decision. Um, I do like the dash deck and we haven't passed anything significantly dashy yet I don't think. Um, I'm going to make a move here. We can still play the Harbinger. We can still get a decent red-white deck. And then yeah, we get Sarkin's Rage so the red deck looks like it's it's almost certainly open at this point. Um, Ukud Cobra is a really powerful card as well. But I think I want to try and get this aggressive sort of beat down deck together. Seems like a plan. Play the burn. If we can pick up um, another Warbringer and a good Mammoth Scale Shaman, then we're just in business. Hmm. Um, I actually quite like the Kai, the Kai CC Emo Behemoth here. Um, it's a really big early threat. We could go for the Hardened Berserker to try and sort of get into the Harbinger a little bit quicker. And that's got potential as well. Hmm. I'm happy with the Berserker Behemoth rather. There's nothing really in white or green coming around. I think those colours are being pretty much cut off from us. Mm -hmm. and it seems like red black looks like the most open colour combination to me. I don't know that. what we're seeing so far. And then we see a pack that has absolutely nothing of use in it. Now, the running volley's not bad for the sideboard. The even tactician's okay. I'm not really interested in looking at mind rock. I don't, at mind rock. I don't think that's the sort of deck we're going to be playing here. Fair enough. We'll take a volley for the sideboard. Get rewarded for the early pick by getting the Bard Berserker anyway. Yep, Dragon Tempest is okay for playing a lot of dragons, but we're not mm, okay. at the minute. That card always seems to go really, really late. Okay. 
Okay, enduring scale lord. Um, <laughs> we don't really have enough to sort of set it off, although the Gleam of Authority and Enduring Scale Lord is a pretty nasty combination. Mm. Um, we can try for the three colour deck and just see if we can pick up the fixing. Well, right, I don't really want another Hardened Berserker. I don't think the card's that good for us. No. We'll take it and we'll just keep ourselves open and see what we can pick up. So this is the this is the first pack. Yeah, and there's not a whole lot left. Obviously, all the removal's gone. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at either Sound of Ugin here or Kindled Fury, I think. Yeah, either. Fury's probably better. The sound's going to be quite high, and we're already pretty steep up the curve anyway. Mm -hmm. So at this point, uh, I'm going to take the Sheltered Area, because if we do decide we want to play the three colours, it gives us a way to sort of fix our mana. Mm -hmm. Commenting voice is fine here, we can use the sort of cycle and draw into the correct lands. Um Valor Dragonfly is kind of removal ish. Yeah, this is all just sort of the chaff now. Have a land. Oh, it's not the land I wanted. Oh no. I suppose it is playable in the deck. So some sort of green, white, red, Naya concoction. This could be interesting. Yep. And we get an Irish in the foremost, so we're almost certainly going to go into white. Um, cards to note, ultimate price in the pack. Um, White Walker, Mr. Kieran. We keep opening really good packs. Mm. How are we looking for Warriors? You've got the Behemoth, haven't you? That's about it. The Bear Muscle Warrior. Yeah, we've got a few Berserkers. Like, giving one of our dragons double strike, though, can just win. So Although it's not a warrior, so it doesn't work. Yeah, I was going to say. The cards of with Maybe this isn't the best card here. Maybe not. But then, we're looking at maybe a Mist 2 Kirin? Uh, let's still take a double strike over that. Yeah. Like we can take the ultimate price, but we're almost certainly not playing it. It's going into too many colours for us. Yeah. We'll take the foremost, and we might pick up some more warriors as the draft goes on. Anyway. Yeah. Things like the colour and the spirits tend to wheel, and things like that as well. Wow, black's open. <laughs> From that direction. From that direction, it? yeah. Um, so here, I think we do take the light walker because it is a warrior that we can trigger with Arishin. Yep. That makes sense. We might not just not playing the green here, especially with now picking the Dramoka captain. Uh, are we playing red white bolster? Seems to be. Same to outrider is really good. Summit prowler as well. Yeah. Not passing a captain. All right, we're we're going red white. Red white counters. That's a deck, right? I think so. Okay. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, a twin bot quite late in the pack. Really good for us. Nothing else in the pack really that I'm sort of interested in taking. Nope. Hmm. So if we're playing red white counters, the Dragon's Eye Sentry is not too bad. Um, although neither is Glaring Aegis for us. You decide, Tom. I can't pick. Uh, I'd probably take the Aegis over the Sentry here. Okay. Just because it um, it does two things. Yeah, you get a you get nice out of it as well as your. Sure, I mean, the other option here is Loose Car, but again, I don't think we're going to be that type of deck. Mm. We can still play the, uh, the Green White Dragon, because it's not too bad a splash. We're going to get, we've got a lot of counters that we can put on stuff. I think Enduring Victory. I'm going to take it over the Epic Confrontation, because I don't think we're going to be heavy enough in green to be casting this early enough. Yeah, Echoes of the Kintry not worth it. Uh, it is if we're going down that plan of playing the Green White Enduring Scale Lord. Mm. But I think we need some more removal in the deck first off. Fair, fair. Get another warrior. Oh, Sprinting Warbrute though. And with the Warbringer we can cast it for like three. Nah, taking the Warbrute. I first picked that before Indrass and been ridiculed for it. Mm -hmm. It works for me. Told you to get the Aspiring back. <laughs> you always do. Alright, so we're playing Dash Counters. This 
seems weird. It doesn't seem like that's going to work. It'll be fine. Seems like slightly anti synergistic. They're the best decks, though, right? I wouldn't care comment. The thing is, like all of our dash cards, we can just cast them. Yeah. It sort of gives us two sides to the plan. And we've got a lot of things to put counters on stuff. Yep. What we really want to do is see another enjoying scale lord, but that, that <laughs> mission's gone. <laughs> yeah. uh, take a dragon fodder here quite happily. Goblins. This is more of a four drop. <coughs> Excuse me. So we pretty much have a playable deck. We're looking for like three more cards, so we can actually prioritize prioritize making uh, fixing <laughs> for the next pack. Um, yeah, impact tremors. Probably not making the cut. <laughs> Almost <laughs> certainly not two of them. Unless we get really, really strong dash creatures in the next pack. Mm. Okay, we've got the loose calm anyway. That's fine then. And a relevant land. Yep. We've got all the relevant lands. Hey. Hmm. I wonder. The on colour siege. I think we should pass it. Ooh, I'm not sure. I mean, this Sage of Reverie is much better for our deck, right? <laughs> Yeah, there's just no other card we're going to take from here. Outpost Siege just slots right into our deck perfectly. Yeah. I would have preferred Citadel Siege, but we might get past one of those. It's, it wouldn't be unheard of to have fifth or sixth pick in this format. Wow. Compared to when we were drafting Fates first and you never ever saw a rare. Mm. Pass pick two. <laughs> So we can actually use both modes on Outpost Siege because we've got quite a lot of dashmen. Yeah. Our creatures might leave the battlefield quite a lot. Um, okay. Pyrotechnics. Solid removal spell. Um, there is the Blossoming Sands as well, which would help us if we want to play this Enduring Scale Lord. But I don't think I can pass pass a Pyrotechnics. No. The Arcturian Priority could hurt us a little bit, but I'm certainly going to hate draft at this point in the pack. This deck's looking pretty strong. It's not looking too bad. I don't think I've ever actually cast. Whoa. Oh, can I do it? Can I cast Arc Bond for funsies? No, it's probably not the best idea. Um. I think the question we're looking at here is do we want Bathing Dragonfire or do we want Sandblast? Sandblast does more damage but it means that we're either having to play defensive mm. whereas the Bathing Dragonfire can just clear something out of the way. I think that's probably better, personally. I'm really tempted to take the Arc Bond just because it's funny but it's probably not the correct play. Probably not. Alright, we'll take Bathe. And that gives us, okay, we get another Bathe. Excellent. Looks like the best thing, more or less. I mean, the wars. The ward scale dragons, all right. It's not great. Mm, it just say. means they can force them to play at sorcery speed. Yeah. Bay's the best card for us here. This pack has pretty much nothing. Um, there's nothing in the back for us, there's nothing I'm particularly worried about cutting. Uh, I'm just going to take the Crystal of the Spirit Dragon and uh, get a little bit of value back out of it. Doesn't the Windscar um, Crags hit here? Yeah, the Windscar Crags the end real picking this pack for us. Um, Abazana Ranch is fine as a sideboard card, but I've got more interest in picking up the Crags. Rugged Highlands, as again, is a solid pick. Um, there's also the Mardu Scout. Yeah. Like, do we want to play the Scale Lord? Don't know. Is it just being greedy? I think it's being a bit greedy at this stage, isn't it? Yeah, well, we'll go with the dash plan. Just make some dashy men. Mm 
do quite like being a base red deck. <clears throat> uh, and we managed to pick up a Warfly. That's pretty good. Feels like winning. Mm. So we've got a really low curve, we should be quite fast. Mm. From this pack, we're not really playing any enchantments. I wish I'd taken the pacifism in pack one now. Mm. We'll take a modern room that we're definitely not playing, and we'll get a second Warfly. Alright, we're on that plan. We're going to make some men and turn them sideways. Sounds about right. We still have at least like two cuts to make from the pack as well, from the picks as well. Maybe it's just these combat tricks. We got the Arc Bond back. Oh, Winning. Take, take it then. Just you know you want it. It's Arc Bond or Channel Harm, and I really want to cast Arc Bond tonight. I'm tired. I take the Arc Bond. Uh, collateral damage is fine for us here. And then there's about for return target and Chapman card from your graveyard. We're not playing any of them except for Gleam and our Upper Siege. Oh, uh, we got a Sword Task Goalkeeper. Never mind. <laughs> ah, cunning strike. Okay, so it looks like we've had a pretty solid draft to be fair. It doesn't look too bad. Somehow we have only 11 creatures though. Oh, I was in charge of it for a click or anything. <laughs> <laughs> we've got some spells like creatures too, it'll be fine. Okay, let's take a look and see what we've got. We don't actually have any creatures in our sideboard we can play either. Eh, oops. Okay, so Dragon Fodder is a creature. Um, tormenting Voice, I don't think, is where we want to be here. Like, the amount of removal we have is just absurd. Yep. With Collateral Twin Bowl, two Bathes, um, Sarkin's Rage, Pyrotechnics, and Enduring Victory. Are we maybe playing too much? Maybe. Do we cut the Collateral? Possibly, and then do we put a... Oh, we... Yeah, we probably do, yes. And that takes us to 23 cards. Oh, yes. Like, I don't think we want to be anywhere close to an 18 land deck. No. We genuinely don't have any other creatures that we can bring in. We have got the Crucible, so splashing the dragons wouldn't be such a bad thing. No. Do you want it? Like, I'm just wondering how this looks. But for this, we're probably cutting Arc Bond. No, oh, I have to cut Arc Bond. Mm -hmm. That makes me sad. Like, we probably cut one of the War Flares as well. So this we probably want to play two forests. Two forests, seven mountains, six plains. Mm -hmm. That certainly seems like it could work. So this is a four drop. This is a two drop. How many warriors did we actually pick up in the end? One, two, three, four. So we've only got four warriors, so is Arishin still still powerful enough do we think? I don't know. Difficult for me to say. I suppose giving the light walker because we've got plenty of ways to get flying onto that thing. Like having a flying double striker seems pretty powerful. Mm. This is suggesting that we only play four planes. I'd, I'd go up and play the Dower Mountains and that. Like we don't have anything that's double red to cast except for Mardu Scout. Yeah. 
That, that feels like a much healthier split. Yes. I think that's better. Alright, so playing the dragons may be a mistake, but I think our creature count is just a little bit too low to not. We're not really trying to massively ramp into anything, but so if we can get to Outpost Siege, we've got a lot of chances to draw the green sources, and the Crucible is going to help us to sort of get into those dragons as well. I think we're okay. I think we're good at that. Alright, we'll see you in a few minutes for round one.